Hello and welcome to Up The Villa podcast. If you're new to our channel, subscribe, drop this video a like and get involved in the comments section down below. So we're playing a game. It literally feels like six months since we did a match preview. So I'm buzzing to be bringing you this. I'm buzzing to be looking forward to a game of football. Villa Park, first lead, under the lights. Can't wait for it. Um, seeing all this FA Cup action. It's just made me want to watch Aston Villa even more. We've had two friendlies versus Brentford and Mould. We've won both of them. Um, so, yeah, let's kick it off then. Josh, we've got Josh from A View from the Stands. His channel's doing bits. Um, definitely one of my favourite fan channels going at the minute. So, um, yeah, I'll kick it off with you then, Josh. What, what have you made of not watching football and then um, Villa's two friendlies? Yeah, I mean, putting up with a bit of AFCON um, here and there, and trying to get into some of the La Liga games, it's just not, it's just not the same. Um, not wetting my appetite as such. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I can't wait for the game, and especially to be honest, having this long winter break and then getting to play Leeds because we always have good games against Leeds, and there it's we've got this little rivalry. I feel like that goes on a little bit as well between the two clubs, and um, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing to see us play and. You know, the fact that the lads have had two behind closed doors friendlies. Um, what, what's probably been the best part about, you know, the little clips that we've had from uh, the behind closed doors friendlies is the the finishing, the quality of finishing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've been watching those um, goals against Mould on repeat um, today. Just just the quality of finishing, especially from Ramsey, McGinn, both of them chipping in. It's my big thing about our midfielders needing to chip in with goals. Um, the Gerrard factor, as you may say, improving our midfielders. Um, yeah, I, I've been buzzing about um, the, the types of finishes and the, the, the quality of finishing that we've seen across those two games, actually. And hopefully we take that to Villa Park on a, on a Wednesday night. One of the other big things as well is, you know, normally when you've had a bit of a break, there's players coming back from injury or, you know, game time. Some players need game time. I feel like with this break that we've had it's enabled squad players to get game time um and i just think it's brilliant you know you've got the the um troy away coming back from afcom banging form now and confident and and match fit ready to go rare and ready to go he'll be on the bench he can come on now and he should be in fine form to start making an impact off the bench as well does anyone else want to add anything yeah, I agree. I agree with everything Joshua, really. It's just, it's just nice to be in a game week, isn't it? Finally, you know, it feels like three months or about three weeks. Um, and yeah, I agree as well that it's a good game to come back to. It's a home game under the lights, Wednesday night. You can't beat that at Villa Park. A night game is something special about, about being there at night time with all the floodlights on when they come out and the atmosphere is going. And the fans are just going to, they're so hungry for this game. It's unreal, isn't it? It's absolutely unreal. You know, I'm talking about going down a couple of hours early to get even have a drink. And I'm not a big drinker, to be honest, just to soak in that atmosphere. So, yeah, I'm buzzing for it. Um, yeah, the, the friendlies. Good idea, isn't it? A couple of like little friendlies keep everyone ticking over. Uh, a couple of players coming back for the VAD been away on international duty. Emmy's done really well, hasn't he? Um, Coutinho's you know banging it now in for Brazil. Looks like he's, he's well back in with the Brazil squad. Saw the nice picture with him with uh Neymar tweeting or I think on Instagram with his arm around Coutinho saying, Great to be back. So, yeah, you know, we've got a diamond there, haven't we? So, we can't wait to see him again at Villa Park. Might even get to see him start first time. So, that's exciting, isn't it? Um, yeah, the goals, I again agree with Joshua. Them goals, you know, all three of them were great finishes, weren't they? I mean, Ramsey just keeps getting better and better, doesn't he? Um, I was watching Liverpool today and the Curtis Jones is in the midfield. And I know we were sort of linked with him a bit in the summer, but for me, Ramsey's head and shoulders above him. Uh, he just looks a top, top, top player and he's just going to get better and better. Lovely finish from McGinn outside the box, nice and calm, just buried it. And it was nice to see Luca Dean bombing down the left and swinging a lovely ball in the box and, and, and Ollie Watkins burying it, you know, lovely header, which is what we want to see more of, don't we, with Ollie Watkins. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I think we've, we're shaping up pretty well. I think we might even, well, I don't know if Bailey's anywhere near. I wasn't even sure. If, did he get any game time in, in the friendly? I don't think he did, did he? No, okay. So maybe he's just on the he's, he's on the grass. Maybe getting uh, getting a bit more minutes that in his old legs. So. <laughs> the old chestnut is he back on the grass? Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd throw that one. 
Yeah. Uh, so hopefully he's on the grass and then uh, we'll <laughs> get to see him in the next sort of three or four weeks as well. Um, so yeah, buzzing. Can't wait. Absolutely uh, amazing to be back. So I know. Yeah, uh, back with a bang. Yeah, I know Ryan's released a piece on on our loan watch then. So uh, you may as well take over this area then, Ryan. Cameron Archer. And uh, obviously, we've seen Keenan Davies demolish Leicester today. So uh, and a fan, and one of their fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, flipping hell yeah. Well, 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 yeah uh, to there. be fair, like yeah, the loan the loan players have had a decent weekend. To be fair, Keenan Davies fifth round of the FA Cup, absolutely lording it, wasn't he up front? Quality, and we know that he had it in his locker. But he just needed the game time and a run of uh, and a run of games without any injury and, and touch wood, he can continue that form to the end of the season and, and he can come back to Villa Park and we can see whether whether he's good enough to break into this setup. But um, yeah, he's doing super well at the minute. And it, like, like I say, he's in the fifth round of the FA Cup along with Jed Steer. He was in golf for Luton. Um, it's a clean sheet. So buzzing for him. Cameron Archer. Just he's got the makings of an absolute quality footballer. I think we, we've seen the goals that he put away in the uh, Papa John's Trophy, didn't we? And they are good, composed, sharp finishes, aren't they? That is lethal. He's ruthless. He's he's got the physique uh, as well. So um, yeah, highly impressed with Archer, and it, it, it's no surprise to me that he's doing what he's doing. So hopefully Preston, could, I don't know whether they've got Blues before the end of the season, but it'd be nice if he bangs against them as well. Just to rub it we'll in a bit to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't struggle to get a ticket, would you? Really? <laughs> no, you saw yeah. on the telly the other day. Oh, my uh, God. Shock. Take your mask in, Justin. <laughs> take your mask, yeah. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah, but, but, but all round, super. Uh, Louis Barry got off the bench. Um, so, yeah, super, super, um, super turnout from the Villa boys. Do you think it's good that both Davis and Archer are on loan in the same league in the championship, almost pushing each other now. Um, Cause you could argue, is there space for any one of them? So I don't know. I feel like it's actually a clever move by Villa to send them both to the championship. See who can both perform at that level um, and be the more consistent goal scorer as well, which um, can only, can only push them both by. And it looks like it's working so far as well. Yeah. And I think the one thing for Archer is he's clinical. You know, that, that strike he scored at the weekend when he, you know, came down and he slotted in the corner, you know, it was precise, but there was power and it was just an all-round great finish, wasn't it? So I think he's, you know, one of the stars that we've got in the making, really. His, his goal he scored in the Carabao Cup, the header, you know, he, he's got it all. Just going to say it? that, what a header that was. He's, he's and the thing all. is, he only needs one chance, doesn't he? You know, if it falls to him, he can finish. So, um, and, yeah. And that's but he's... The, that's but his composure, on, soccer, isn't it? yeah, yeah, that composure showed, and and and, and he, the awareness that goal he scored at the weekend that he knew he was onside. He, he, as soon as that player, I think it was a poor pass out, wasn't it? It was intercepted, and straight away, bang! He, his arm was up. Give it to me, give it to me, and and to to have the ability then one touch control, bang in the net. He's got a lot. He's got so much going. And the thing is with him as well, when you watch him, it doesn't matter whether it's up against Premier League opposition, he's in the under-23s or he's up in the Championship. He still delivers it and he's finishing. He's just still there, isn't it? It doesn't matter who he's playing against. You give him the chance and he scores and he's he's really, really good. And, you know, I think a lot of... He's just natural, isn't it? He's he's, he's just a natural finisher. And some some have got it. Your Michael Owens of the world and all them, they are natural finishers. And, you know, Cameron Archer is in that bracket. So it's a big 17 games for Aston Villa now, isn't it? To sort of define our season, define where we are. So what's everyone's thoughts are we in for a good run now? Do, do you feel like we're really going to start ramping up and picking up the wins? Massively, yeah. I think this is a, this is this is going to be a really really amazing run for me now. I think, like we said the other day, it, it, we've got a nice little run of fixtures coming up. Um, no, it games easy, are they? But we haven't got any of the big boys, so we've got a nice little set of fixtures coming in. We're, we're as we've just said, we all seem to be fit and firing. Majority of the squads ready to go. They've had a good few weeks now under Gerard, and they've had this little mini break where they've they've had just lots of time on the training ground to sort of get his ideas and and, and sort of get the morale and, and the team spirit together. Great win just before it as well, Everton away. So that you know we go into it off the back of a win, albeit a while ago now. 
I'll just say um, if we can start this little run now with a, with a positive ga- win on Wednesday against Leeds, then I really see the next five or six really pushing it up. Yeah, there is a little bit of a gap between us and seventh, sixth and seventh isn't about ten points. So it's going to be difficult to sort of chase that down, but. Why not go for it? You know, just try and win every single game. And that's what I think he'll do. He'll go into every game very positive. He'll be looking to win every game. Uh, and and it's going to be a ride to the end of the season. I think I think we're going to see lots of good football, lots of goals, and hopefully lots of wins. Top stuff, yeah. So it's just, just exciting now. But a lot I've said on we said on um, Josh's channel, didn't we, that you know, now the momentum to go into next season is big, really. And I just think it's it's, it's, I feel like this 17 games is, is really going to define how we start next season for me. Um, we've had a good period under Gerard now, but I think it, it is time now to start getting these wins and getting this bit of consistency. In. And I'd like us to beat one of the top teams that we've got coming to Villa Park, whether it's Spurs, whether it's Liverpool. I'd just love us to just, just get that sort of little, that little monkey, you know, off our back. Do you know what I mean? Just sort of. Because we just haven't beat one of them top sides yet under Gerard, have we? Yeah, I'd like us to as well put a run of games of wins together. I think it's felt a while since we've gone like four, five games sort of, you know, winning streak. I know um, we, just, we always talk about that famous 10 game unbeaten run in the championship that basically, you know, got us into the situation to get us up. But actually, when we think about the Premier League, it has felt sort of a while since we've gone on a nice little uh, winning run. Um, and I think, you know, again, Gerard, he's used to doing that. He's used to putting together uh, sequences of results that are positive uh, as time as Rangers, where he generates momentum um, to create these runs. So I'd like us to really go, even if it's three or four games on the bounce where we win. For me, that's another big stepping stone, a good start for us. Yes, so we've got Leeds coming up and I know they're going on our comment section every single time. So Leeds 15th, 22 points, seven points off relegation. They've had a very, very tough season. They've had a lot of injuries and they've had no new signings in January. So what's happened to you? <laughs> what, what has happened to you? Um, but yeah, uh, it's going to be a difficult game. Um, I watched them against... Um, West Ham blew them apart. I think it was Harrison who got his hat trick. They were really good that day. Um, and I do watch a lot of one leads. Um, Connor, he, do, he does a fantastic channel. Um, so I do watch his channel all the time, hearing what he's saying. And I know, you know, he, he's very honest. And, um, you know, he, there's a bit of discontent with the Leeds fans at the minute. Um, the football on the pitch, Bielsa, it's not, I don't know, it's up and down. They're not... They don't really know where the where the vision is, where the project is. It's took them a lot of time to get back into the Premier League, but it just feels that now that there's a little bit of, I don't know. I mean, if I'm looking at Leeds now and I'm thinking Newcastle massively strengthened, Watford strengthened, um, Burnley, you know, strengthened a bit. They've got a couple of games in hand. Everton with their new manager, uh, Lampard, you feel like they're going to, Claw on the table a little bit. If I, to be honest, I think I'd be a little bit worried if I was a Leeds fan right now. What, what are you thinking, Ryan? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, the optimistic Leeds fan would say they were four points off tenth, but then the pessimist would say seven points off dropping out of this league. And I think will it cost them? Will it cost them that they didn't strengthen in January? Mm. Yeah, they've had injuries, like you said. It's ravaged their squads at times this season. Um, the squad depth isn't great. I've seen that Bielsa come out and said something like he didn't want to strengthen in January because he didn't want to upset that family vibe that they've got going on. But I think they've turned down offers for Van der Beek, was it? He went to Everton, didn't he? And Harry Winks. Um, so it might just it might just cost them. And like you said, there is a little bit of discontent there, but not too much towards Bielsa because he's probably got a lot in the credit, hasn't he? He's got a lot in the bank, um, similar to us with Dino, isn't it? They've been on a journey with him, but I don't know. There's a lot of mixed messages. The board are saying next season we'll go and splash the cash and go for top six, and then they're coming out after the window shut, saying they didn't want to buy anyone because they didn't want to block the youth path. So yeah, it's a bit up and down at the minute at Leeds. So I'd be nervous. I think. I think if Villa was in this position now, yes, I'd be looking at that tenth spot, four points off. But looking over my shoulder, I'd, I'd be nervous. We'd have Phillips though, wouldn't we, at Villa? <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah. In, in all, I mean, in all honesty, I have watched Leeds a bit and I do like Forshaw. I think he's a real tidy midfielder. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what Leeds fans make of him, but every time I've watched Forshaw, I think he's he, he's tidy on the ball. Um, Rafinha, you know, he's 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 class, isn't he? Um, you know, he's their bright spark and, you know, he can change a game on his own, can't he? But, um, I think if if I'm looking at it at Villa Park under lights on Wednesday, um, you know we're on the back of a win and a draw, and I and I and I feel, I feel I feel like we can we can we can win. To be fair, I think we're gonna have too much for Leeds. I think this break is gonna have done us the world of good. Um, what what are you thinking then, Justin? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm not a massive Bielsa fan. I think he's I think it's a bit of a myth the Bielsa thing. Yeah, I think you know he's got. He's done okay. All the clubs he's done, he's, he's never really put a lot of trophies on the table. And his teams always tend to run out of steam a little bit. If I, and I agree with you. I think if I was a Leeds fan, I'd be a bit concerned, you know, and, and that he has got a bit of in the bank, like Ryan says. But I think they're all going to be very frustrated. You know, we are only looking at it from a Villa's point of view and from afar. We don't, we don't follow them like we do the Villa. Uh, but looking from, from a distance, I'd be very frustrated being a Leeds fan. I think that they haven't pushed on. They haven't pushed you know the transfer market at all you know was it Bamford has been out most of the season on and off uh, um, Calvin Phillips has been out you know they're two main players from last season standout players both made it into the England squad and, and they've lost so I'm just amazed they haven't brought in reinforcements in those areas even if it was a, a couple of loan deals there's some really good loans floating about wasn't there in January and to not even try and supplement your squad with one or two decent loans. It's very odd, to be honest. Um, he likes very small squads, doesn't he? He likes to work with a very small amount of players, which is great. A bit like the Wolves thing under under Nuno. He never liked to, to fill his squad with loads of players, which is fine if you don't get injuries. But as they've found this season, you start racking up injuries and suspensions and, and, you've, and your first team just is decimated, isn't it? And, and then you end up in the position they're in, looking over the shoulders at, at the bottom three. So... Yeah, I think I think they're a very strange team. I think on the day they can probably beat anybody, but I think that's anybody in the Premier League nowadays, isn't it? If, if you have an off day and the other team plays well, you're going to get beat. But I fancy just massively on on Wednesday. I, th- I can't see anything other than a win. So I think we'll be getting to it, you know, in good form, in good in good spirits, and and Leeds just going to be another team. Hopefully, we can do and and push us on. Yeah, yeah, we we owe one as well at Villa Park. They've done us bad. They've done us <laughs> bad the last two times, haven't they? Yeah. Six goals in two games. So, yeah, we definitely owe them one. So, yeah, we've got to play them again at their place as well, haven't we? Because that was uh, called off. So, we've got them twice in this in this next, uh, whatever, whatever the, re, the, the rearranged game is. So, yeah, could be an interesting few weeks against Leeds. Yeah. You're a brave man as well, Justin, with your Bielsa slander. And you've, oh, you've got no trips it's not, to lead. No, it's not. It's not even slander. You know, when it, when he went there, I, you know, I know. Um, you know, the, the, like the sky were all over him last season, weren't they? And I, I looked quite in depth into his, his career and his history, and, and and you know, he's got this really, really great. Um, or about him, everybody talks so highly of him about his techniques and the way he is with people. And yeah, that's great. But if you actually look at what the, the, the what he's put on the table is for, for his success, and he hasn't done a very you know a lot in terms of trophies and things like that. And 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 he's I think the only title he won. I'm, this was a long time ago already. When then he was he was manager of a team and that they had a very condensed season. Not you know not not like 30, 40 games a week play a very small season. So yeah, you know I'm not slagging him off. I just I don't get. The, the 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 way he sort of heralded as one of the best managers ever, you know. Some people will say that, but mm. that's just my opinion. You know, Leeds fans will probably slaughter me now on this, <laughs> but it's just my opinion. <laughs> so, Josh, what what are you making of um, our link up then now with Coutinho and Buendia? What 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 are you expecting? What do you want to see? Oh, I'm so <laughs> excited! I'm so excited. <laughs> um, it's 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 actually you know I keep thinking about it. And, and just the movement, the creativity we're going to have, the chances we're going to create. Um, what, what, what I really like is, you know, the fact, fact of the matter is um, there's people starting to take note of Buendia now outside of Villa a bit more, um, starting to see him come to fruition. And I just think Leeds leave a lot of space. So the way to beat Leeds is you've got to beat them through one pass break their first unit, break their pressing unit. If you break one pass through them, there's half spaces to turn into. Um, and I think the way we play will invite that press on. 
will pick them off. And then Coutinho and Buendia for me are going to have so much space to play in. Um, and that, I know that's just Leeds, but overall as well, I just I just really like what those two are going to offer. I think uh, it's the balance in the team is there now with the fullbacks, with the with the striker, with the midfielders behind them. It's licensed to licensed to thrill is probably the word, and hopefully licensed to kill with their assists <laughs> as well. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 Sorry, Dad, it's Villa Park under the lights. Them two on the ball, sell out, and it leads always bring a decent crowd with them as well. Lively crowd, so oh, yeah, can't wait to see them. So, <laughs> cannot wait. It's, it's and Ramsey, interesting, Ramsey the... as well. I'm so excited to see as well. Like, I've, you know, you, you talked about the finishing that was that was lethal, wasn't it? From Ramsey in the in the friendly on his left foot as well. I just mm. feel like he's, he's balanced now, he's driving his power. Oh my god, he's just he's just been revolutionised under under Gerard, hasn't it? So again, that's a that's a player that I can't wait to see well, on Wednesday as well. We spoke about Ramsey, didn't we, at the start of the season? And I think we I think we first said this in the Newcastle game where we felt he was starting to feel like he owns the shirt a little bit, and he was like justified to be there. He always felt like he didn't really feel like he owned the shirt. But I mean, now the transformation in the, the short space of time this season so far, where he's come from, from game one to where he is now, he's gone up so many levels, hasn't he? Do you want me to uh, hit you with a stat? Go on then. Right, it's a good one. good one this is. I've seen this the other day. Um, 15 games he started, eight wins. The eight games where he hasn't started, nil point, no wins. So that just tells you everything, doesn't it? It does keep him in that team. <laughs> stat He's got a first name on the team shirt, gotta be. <laughs> Definitely. Right. So we'll end it there. Then we'll go for our score predictions. Um, obviously, because we haven't done one for a very long time, I'm gonna kick it off with a magical night under the lights. 3-1 Villa. Brian. I am gonna go for a repeat on the last time we beat him in the Premier League. 2004, that was. We beat him 2-0. And and Gallon Ronnie Johnson scored, so I'm going for a repeat of that. Buzzing Josh, I'm going for a reverse of what they did to us, um, where they beat us three 0 at home. I'm going to reverse that. I think we're <laughs> going to have three 0 clean sheet. Leeds fans tears, lovely. Justin, <laughs> I, I agree. I think we're going to do them comfortably. Uh, I think the way they try and just attack, attack, attack. The like Josh said, we get, they're going to leave space behind, and with the players we've got now. Coutinho, Buendia especially, and Ramsey running on. I, can, I, I think it's about time we slaughtered someone, so I'm going for 4-0 <laughs> Villa. <laughs> Justin Slaughter. Just, cool. just a 4-0 four, four <laughs> Villa. Cool, right, we'll end it there. Then. So it's been good to do our match preview. It's, I'm happy that we're back, going to be consistently now uploading um, our usual sort of schedule. Um, so after this video, you'll have our predicted lineup episode as well, followed by fan cams after the game as well. So thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for your support. Check out Nigel Spink episode if you haven't already and subscribe to Josh's channel. Um, he's absolutely smashing it. A view from the stands. So up the villa. Up the villa. Up the villa. <laughs>